Well, hello everybody. This is Margaret and welcome to the Bobolos podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, but also inspiration from the world of the classical arts, fashion, film, and random drippings of the brain pan, which do occur. I'd like to start today's episode with random drippings and then followed by a trip downstairs to my basement little makeshift studio slash staging area for Bobolero's. I have a lot to show you regarding upcoming Rhinebeck weekend. And I can't believe it's already here. I'm so excited. Uh, we'll talk about plans for Rhinebeck and I hope that if you are in proximity that you'll consider coming to Rhinebeck. It's just such a wonderful weekend and we'll talk more about that. And also we'll talk about the giveaway. We're going to extend the giveaway another week and you can win a kit of your choosing and the color of your choosing by Bobolero's for a Barbie bubble wrap. And all you have to do is just answer the question in the comments below. And the question is, what movie has influenced you from the past, especially in terms of fashion? I loved reading some of the responses are so interesting. Uh, a lot of Diane Keaton um, references, Annie Hall came up, which was really interesting to me. It's amazing how film impacts us in different ways. So the giveaway is going on another week. And with that, let's get started. Well, it's been a tough week. We all know what's going on in the world. And a lot of times we could feel helpless because here we are really enjoying the blessing of having peace or, you know, roof over our heads, running water, the things that it's so easy to sometimes take for granted, but uh, there's so much strife in the world. And I was talking to a friend of mine and she is from Israel and she was telling me how she doesn't even want to, like she feels very disconnected from enjoying things in life because she's here and not there. And it got me to thinking about, you know, what to do in those circumstances where we feel almost guilty for enjoying um, a, a more or less pain-free life, right? Enjoying peace and other people um, are in such turmoil. So I wanted to start today's broadcast with just some words from a book that I have loved for many years. It impacted me. It sort of gave me the idea that we have tools within us, especially since we are creators and we also are working with color and vibration. The book is Toning and it's written by Elizabeth Laurel Keyes. And what is toning? Toning is the ability for us to use our own voice to manifest things. Now, I know that might sound out there, but she writes in this book, just I'll read a couple of sentences, then I'll play a little Bach and then we'll talk knitting. Um, we began with the idea that few people realize that their lives can be changed, that they have the power to control the life forces and reform their life patterns through sound. And this lady, I think she lived in the 50s or 60s. She was somewhere in the um, Southwest and people would visit her from all over the place. A lot of times with really debilitating conditions, health conditions and such. And she was able to sort of like, you know how whales have this sonar? She was able to sort of do a scan. She was so connected to sound and she was able to scan them with her own voice or she was able to feel like where the blockage was and then using generating a sound through her own voice, she was able to penetrate whatever issue 
was in the body and cause that vibration to have an effect. Now, scientifically, we know this is true because we've all seen those videos of um, you know singers reaching a note and having that note break a glass, right? Like, it, it, you know, you see the glass, like a wine glass start to, you know, move and start to like vibrate. And then the next thing, boom, it shatters. Um, so there is a inherent secret power to sound. And she goes on to say, sound is the meeting place of the abstract and manifested idea. So just a, a word, that maybe sometimes we feel so powerless, especially in these times, what can we do? And there's also this feeling of, I feel guilty enjoying life when there is so much suffering in the world. And I think that we can tap into um, our heart and our voice and our words and generate and, and also channel that towards love in the world, towards more harmony, towards peace, and towards the ultimate, right? Which is love. I'd like to play for you a piece of music by J.S. Bach with that intention of love. It is his prelude in C major. I've played it before on this podcast. Somehow it seems so right for now. It's very purifying. It's in the key of C major, which is a key that is associated with sun, light, and powerful manifestation of joy and peace and harmony. This is truly a piece that harmonizes. And so I just invite you to maybe think about anything that you really would like to generate this energy of peace, harmony, healing, light, um, think of that person, think of that situation, think of, you know, even in yourself, if there's something, and we can all do this as a kind of collective expression of love and peace, our voice, our energy to give in the direction of positivity.
been listening to this great book on tape. Um, on tape, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> book on tape. Woo, I am dating myself. Well, audiobook, let's say audiobook. Um, and it is called I Am, which is the memoirs of Isaac Mizrahi. Fabulous. Um, fabulous, fabulous. Um, he is most known as a fashion designer, but I'm truly, a, and he says he doesn't like that term, but Renaissance man. Um, and he has a great YouTube channel called Hello Isaac, and it's so entertaining and it's really inspiring on so many levels. He cooks, um, he talks about books, he um, talks about, you know, his closet and just like discusses all sorts of things like on random Uber rides, like his ideas about, you know, things going on in the city, and theater. And anyway, um, it's a fascinating book, but there was one line that really got me thinking and he talks about his experience of studying fashion design in Parsons which is a very well-known design school in Manhattan. And it got me, it, so he was talking about studying different textiles and learning how all the different materials and fabrics, how they are different and how they mold and conform to the body in clothing differently. So he had a teacher in Parsons and he has, also like he reiterates this statement in the book and the statement is this wool is god and i thought about that especially since many of us as knitters i think primarily knit with wool and it got me to thinking about how grateful i am personally for the gift of wool you know after living a pretty <laughs> pretty, um, I would say, you know, sizable life over five decades of being on this planet and going through all the things of, you know, like exploring, like who I, who am I? What, what is my purpose? Like, how do I define myself and like not fitting any particular mold? Like, yes, classical pianist, but not really fitting into that world, if you know what I mean. And now this new world, I mean, being a knitter for most of, well, at least more than half the, yeah, half my life now and working with wool from a knitting perspective, I realized that I actually work with wool also when I play the piano because wool is what gives piano its tone. The hammers are made of felted wool. And each piano hammer, when you press down a note on the piano, the hammer, it generates speed and it hits the string. So it's the wool meeting the metal string that creates sound. And I have been, one of the things that has um, always intrigued me and fascinated me and has been the target of my work as a pianist has been the study of tone production at the piano. What is it that makes a piano sing? I particularly loved the piano tone of the pianists that were kind of in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and even before that, you know. Um, so great pianists, Paderewski, Rachmaninoff, Hoffman, um, Rubinstein, of course, Arthur Rubinstein, Vladimir Horowitz, these were the pianists that I most loved. And kind of, I noticed even, I was like 17, 18, and I would go to the libraries, take out recordings and listen. And I always felt that there was a warmth, there was an expression, there was some kind of, for lack of better term, golden tone that was inherent in those earlier recordings and pianists. And there was something that happened post, I would say like 1950. There was a more angular, edgy, athletic, um, sort of lacking the warmth and the vitality and 
color and ability to like really penetrate the heart um, in the tone of many of the popular pianists. And I, I, I just like couldn't, I, I knew it from my heart, but I didn't know it from physically. Like why, why was it so different back then? Why did they generate such a different tone? And so I spent over 20 years of my life <laughs> researching this and learning those techniques and they were buried because well it had a lot to do with the war and the loss of the transmission of this type of piano playing and in any case i was able to bring all this information together i studied with a great teacher um, in my 20s and he showed me a lot of the secrets and then I took everything that I had acquired and developed it further through starting schools of music and teaching hundreds upon hundreds of students through my life. I developed a technique and it's called the golden tone technique. And it's um, something that I made available through textbooks and also an online course. And of course the students that I teach on a private basis but this is all to say that it dawned on me as i'm listening to the isaac mizrahi book wool is god i realized that wool has always been a part of my life in many different ways and perhaps it is the um expression of wool that fascinates me more than anything else if that makes any sense. So it's funny that we can go through life thinking we are this, we are that, and place ourselves in a category. And it might not be exactly the right category because you know, like, and Isaac talks about this in his book. He says that although people refer to him as a fashion designer, he always saw himself more as a performer. Um, he first got into the School of Performing Arts in Manhattan as a theater major and also is a very accomplished piano player, singer. I've heard him do Peter and the Wolf um, in New York City uh, around holiday time. He does that and it was always so fascinating. He's such a vibrant character. Anyway, highly recommend this book and color. He talks a lot about color, um, launching his first collection, how he had um, a big range of color and he created families of color for his collection. So there was a collection with warm tones. There was a collection of um, cool and then the pops, the neon pops. And, you know, of course, when we talk about like Stephen West shawls, I don't know, so maybe some of you are doing the um, mystery knit along right now. Um, I personally am not, but I'm always fascinated by his designs. But we talk a lot about that in the world of coming up with colors, right? Like a cool tone, a warm tone, and then a neon. Um, so with that being said, I like to take you downstairs to my little wool uh, apothecary. <laughs> and uh, my little setup and show you some of the things that I've been working a lot on. So come on, come on, let's go downstairs. Okay, so here we are in my little setup area and I'm just getting ready for Cake Palooza. This is Rhinebeck weekend coming up. This weekend, I am so beyond excited. And if you are in the New York area and, or even like, you know, not, <laughs> and have ever wanted to attend, I would say do it. You're gonna have the best time. It just is so much, not only to see and experience, but it's just, you meet people, People are so friendly. It is the most wonderful community and you just get inspired by all the things. And so it is truly an event. So 
I have been working on a collection called the Breakfast at Tiffany's collection. And if you've been following me on Instagram and even on this channel, I've been talking about it for a few weeks now. So it's finally all done. And there's a lot to this collection, which I like to talk to you about and show you some of the things. Okay. So first off, I'm wearing my Coco Bolero. I forgot to talk about that. So, um, it is made in my yarn, it, Bobolero's yarn. And although this looks black, it's actually not. It's um, a little bit more of like a midnight kind of twilight color, but it reads black, which is sort of an interesting phenomenon. And I talked a lot about this jacket in my last podcast, so I'm not going to talk more about it right now, but just to let you know, what I'm wearing. So anyway, Breakfast at Tiffany's. So this is a movie from 1961. I also talked about how, you know, the style icon, Audrey Hepburn, um, is starring in it. And Audrey is <laughs> like, even as I'm listening to the Isaac Mizrahi book, he talks about a photo shoot he was doing with Richard Avedon and meeting Audrey Hepburn, who was also like a huge influence on him in his first collection. And just how, according to him, he said nobody wore clothes quite the way Audrey did. And anyway, she left a lasting impression on so many of us. And I wanted to celebrate the feeling of that movie, the vibrancy of that movie with some of the retro vibes to encapsulate the colors that are in that movie because it takes place in New York City and it's got a lot of the, you know, intriguing kind of neutrals. So I'll show you a few of those, um, the grays, the kind of beige off white kind of shades, but then there are a black, of course, quintessential black but then they're also fabulous pops of color that are also presented in the movie. So a lot to talk about on many levels. So one of the things that I wanted to bring into the collection to celebrate it was accessories and bath and beauty products, because I just felt like, you know, Hey, it's autumn in the city. Let's be cozy. Let's celebrate all the, you know, kind of cool vibes of, you know, like having baths and pampering yourself and having like those little spa nights where you just like are in your like cozy, cozy robe and you're knitting on something really cozy and quick and starting to make gifts for the holidays and taking time to just like have, you know, a little moment of self care and just, you know, we all need those. We all need those. We all need those, right? So let's start off with talking about some of the accessories. So, uh, you know, I find that jewelry, costume jewelry is just such a quick and easy way to elevate an outfit to like bring it into like a little extra extra. Like if you're going out, you could wear something really simple, but then dress it up with a cool, funky earring. So I have a lot of vintage earrings. These are vintage 80s earrings that I've brought into the collection. Like really cute. Like this is something that is so quintessential 60s. These might even be 60s. I'm not sure. Be, these these are probably 60s because they have the clip on backs, but like a little round, um, you know, moment <laughs> in pink. How about that? Or, you know, round um, red hoops. I love these. These are just like, I have to try these on. I haven't tried these on yet. And I think this has to happen. These are all very, um, these are all priced at the same price, which is $15. And 
you know, just, I just wanted to have some options because maybe you're making a, you know, Barbie bubble wrap. I'm going to show you some options for those. And maybe you just want to like accessorize it with a fun, cool earring. You know, this is a classic. This is almost like a Chanel type vibe. I'm switching over. These um, hoops are also available. Pearl hoops. Like, these are not vintage, but they have the vibe. But these are true vintage. Look at these with um, the polka dots. Super cute. Um, so I'm bringing this stuff to Cake Palooza. However, I do want to say that a lot of people have been asking, oh, sorry. A lot of people have been asking about the collection and wanting to access it because they won't be coming to Rhinebeck for the weekend. So what I'm going to be doing is a private pre-sale and that's going to be happening on Wednesday of this week. So that is October 18th and it's going to be happening at 12 noon Eastern Pacific time. So I would say if you're interested in shopping any of these items, because these are all limited quantities, then I would suggest go to my mailing list. If you haven't joined, um, then just go to bobolaros.com and join the newsletter and you'll get all the specific instructions. But I will be coming on live on Instagram at noontime Wednesday, um, October 18th on my Bobolaros page and doing the live sale then. So like if there's anything that you see that you want, then you could just like grab it there at that time so that I'll just, you know, keep those held back for you. And so you'll get them because again, um, like each of these earrings, this is all one of a kind stuff. And I don't know. I just think, I think they're fabulous. Look at these. Fabulous. You know, there are going to be parties coming up. There are going to be events. Oh, these. I'm going to have pictures on the site of all these. But this has like a glittery in, inner kind of rhinestone. Oh, I mean, those are so cool. So cool. So, okay. So we have the earrings. Uh, we also have, okay, this is so funny. In the movie, um she has the opening moment she's like sleeping and she has this eye mask on all right this is part of the empire state spa day <laughs> i have a, a little spa day kit available and i'm going to tell you all about that but anyway i only have a few of these these are handmade in um, eastern europe they're so cute they are just so cute for that extra bit of pampering. Um, you know, if you're on a flight, a long distance flight, I mean, how fabulous is that? Put on your eye mask. Okay. More accessories. So you've seen the bags. I have only a few left. These are clutches and again, also European made. What I love about these are the extra attention to detail like these tassels in this jade green um it just like i have just a regular jeans pants suit on right now but like something like this really instantly brings it to a more elevated level um beautifully lined snap closure um you know just fabulous with let's say a shrug so i'm dropping things left and right but this is the Barbie bubble wrap. And um, this one, uh, this is 3.0 version. The 3.0 version has the shaping here. And I just think that you can adjust the shaping as you wish. I did, like the pattern tells you to do one in decrease because most people just like it laying on their shoulders. I like to keep my neck warm. So I increased additional rows, which the pattern tells you that too, if you want to go all the way up. I like things hitting me here, but that's my personal preference. But I just want to show you this, like how cool is this? So this is a yarn color called Audrey's Coat. 
I have it right here. And so Audrey's coat, and I think I told you guys, I was like a little bit like, which direction shall I go? Because Audrey's coat, it was a toss up for me. Like, is it more in the like orange pumpkin-y kind of shade? So I created, um, yeah, Audrey's coat. So this is made with four skeins of the Rita Bulky, one skein of the Vivian mohair. And this is, um, yeah, just like quick and easy and so cozy and so fun to make. Those bubbles are just really happy. And here is a crochet double crochet trim and on the neckline too, just as a little finish, which is optional if you don't, you don't need to do that, but I just wanted to give that extra. So Audrey's coat, I then wasn't sure, like, should it be a little bit more kind of on the pop, on the pinkish salmony. So I don't know if you could see this, but this is, un this is a different orange. This one is called peach martini because it truly is more like a salmon kind of color compared to this one, which is more like a tangerine orange color so that is the difference and so whichever is your orange of choice <laughs> you can make it from either of those so they're all really great options for making it of course there are other colors that you can choose to make this version um, from one of my favorites is trench coat trench coat and again, I'm sorry, this lighting might be blowing out, but it is, and I'm posting a lot of these on Instagram so you could get like different um, shots of them and also like movie inspiration shots. But this is like a grayish alabaster bone. And I posted something yesterday, uh, footage of Audrey from the movie wearing a trench coat. And that was my inspiration behind this color. It is such an amazing neutral that goes with any skin tone. Um, if you wanted to, for instance, do a two color, a two color bubble wrap, and this is the 2.0 version. I chose again because I like to keep my neck warm. I went all the way up and did a turtleneck. However, you can also just stop it. Don't do the turtleneck and just stop it you know, right at, you know, where you want to, maybe your collarbone um, and, and have it here, or like don't do the ribbing at all and just stop it here. Um, the sky's the limit. The thing about the two color version is that when you make the bubbles, um, I show you where to place the contrasting color so that you get this effect, which is so cool because it defines the bubble in a really interesting way. So I was thinking like alabaster with even like Audrey's coat. I mean, that is such a great combo. Or you can even do, there's a color here I wanna show you. It's called Mean Reds and it's crimson -y. It's so mysterious and it's like really opulent red. So for instance, something like that, how fabulous would that be for the holidays? The bubble wrap knits up. Truly, you could get it done in just a couple of nights of knitting. And it's mostly the knit stitch. Like you're going around with the knit stitch. Very, very easy. So anyway, um, some options. This two color version. Let me just show you. It's so nice as well. The things are falling left and right. Things are falling. What I neglected to mention is that this room is like the size of a closet. That's the truth. But we got to make it work, right? Make it work, make it work. All right, here we go. Okay, this one has to go over and it's going to ruin my hair, but that's all right. That's all right. What is stuck here? Oh, I put a bobby pin in my hair. This is so super awkward. <sighs> okay. I like literally put a bobby pin in because I saw this Instagram like how to bump up your hair by putting a bobby pin in and it's like yeah and like nobody will know but now everybody knows you see everybody knows everybody knows because when you put on a hand knit everything gets snagged everybody will know 
everybody will know the secrets. Okay, so this is the two color version. Like, you see how fun that is. Um, on my Instagram, I also put like some of my fabulous, fabulous customers have made some and like they are divine, divine um, how they did it. So oftentimes they leave out this because, not, you know, it's not for everybody, the turtleneck. I'm a turtleneck kind of person, but like even if you stop it here, like look, right? That's good, right? That is good. I like this. It's like a funnel neck. It's very regal. That's what I like about the shrug or like bubble wrap, you know, or any kind of thing that you put around your shoulders. It just is such a statement piece and it's so versatile. I love it. I love it. So this was made with the pink from my Barbie collection. I might have a few more skeins of that. It's called Iconic Pink. And um, yeah, I'm bringing whatever I have to the show. But no, that's it. That's it. Okay. And then there's also a four color version. And the four color version, you can make so many different ways. So this is the Barbie bubble wrap. This is the 1.0 version. This is your straight up tube. No decrease, no shaping, but it is also how super cute, right? How super cute. So if you see this, like really, you can kind of like do a little drapey drapey on top and have just like a, really a lot of fun playing with colors. So this is four colors. So a lot of options. You could do Tiffany blue. For this one, I'm just pulling out a random skein of it. Tiffany blue with it, like say this trench coat, bring in a little peach martini. And how about Var Jack Paul? Var Jack Paul, those four. I mean, incredible. Just, I love the way these two guys go together. Even if you wanted to do a two color neutral, fabulous. Okay, so these are just some options for you. Okay, moving right along. All right, so we have purses. We have three clutches left. Um, black and white, which, you know, hey, how fun is that graphic on graphic? And this one is adorable because it comes with a chain. A chain. So you can like wear it cross body or not. Up to you. But also this is great because it's got this wonderful graphic print. This is all silk Iket. Um, I think they're made in Turkey. Yeah, and it's a Swedish designer. So love them. And then for that extra like Chanel-ish vibe, there, I have two bags left that are the square type with a closure and a chain. So you can wear it literally, literally like this. And it's like super, super cute. So yeah, and then I do have one left of a very large tote. And this is great because this is like, Talk about carrying your knitting in style. <laughs> Everything goes in there. You have enough in here. There's where my tape dispenser went. <laughs> it must have fallen in. Um, okay. This, like, look at how much yarn you could fit in here. Plus, like, you, if you're on the go, you're traveling, you could fit in your computer, laptop, cables, magazines, books, knitting, boom ready to go. And this, let's face it, goes with everything because, yeah, this has such a kind of, I don't know, Jasper Johns feel to it. Uh, Franz Klein, if you know his um, black and white paintings, reminds me of Franz Klein. This is just so quintessential New York 1960s. And that's what I was trying to channel in getting the pieces for this collection was glam, city, chic, graphic prints, and just, you know, with that slight bit of like, again, I'm quoting from the book, 
the I am Isaac book. <laughs> oh, this was like such a good line. Okay, I have to share this with you. You know what he said? He said that what in his years of dressing women, what defines, and you know, also growing up in Brooklyn and watching his mother dress which, with such style and even on a budget, like taking things that are inexpensive and pulling them together to create like an amazing look. He had one quote that style always has a bit of mystery in it. And that like, so what is that mystery? It's like that, that kind of element that is making people wonder, like, especially with the hand knits, like that looks so cool. Is that hand knit? You know, because sometimes hand knits could be frumpy. Let's face it. Um, sometimes like when I started to knit, like a lot of my sweaters were so frumpy looking because I didn't know how to choose the right yarns and needles to combine correctly. It is a formula, right? It's like when you're baking, you have to have the right proportions, right? The right ratios. You need that right yarn weight ratio with the right needle to create the fabric that really is luxurious. That's, that's one of my passions. So, okay. So that's the fashion accessories. Let me also show you, let's go into the bath and, and body section. Now <laughs> I have three candles. Um, so this one is empire state evening and this is hand poured soy candles, eight ounces. And these are all handmade, hand poured in California for Bogoleros. And um, so this is just like, think of a kind of cool wintry night, like starry night vibe. Empire State evening, coffee date, because Tiffany's is all about coffee. I wish you could smell it. It is delectable. You want to eat it. It's so good. It is so good. And that, by the way, would go great like with this coffee date with a porcelain coffee cup you know that scene with audrey in the beginning of the film when she's walking in front of tiffany's with her to-go bag uh, with a croissant from the deli and the deli to-go cup this is the to-go cup but it's a permanent cup because it's porcelain and it's so good drinking from here is a whole other level Mark, my husband, has already like stolen one of these and he drinks exclusively from it. He loves this cup. So this is made by We Are Happy to Serve You um, and made in um, Thailand. So it's like a fabulous, fabulous little extra, extra item for yourself or as a gift. And bath bombs. If you saw my video, I got, <laughs> I couldn't resist. I made bath bombs. I don't have many. Um, I have like 20 or something, but they are part of like the Empire Evening Spa package, which includes a hat kit, quick and easy hat kit. You could literally knit this in one night. Um, the candle, the eye mask, <laughs> this, okay. We need stuff to light our candle. Watch this. Okay. I couldn't resist. Lipstick lighters guys lipstick lighter is this not like the chicest i mean i don't smoke but back in the day can you imagine lighting your cigarette with a lipstick lighter but hey we can light our candles with lipstick lighters oh it's so good it's so good oh my gosh okay lipstick lighters you could tell like i have been going a little bit, um, I'd say overboard, but Hey, it's all good. It's all like in the service of joy, right? I have some little soaps in lavender. These are butter bar soaps, orange, vanilla, and Earl Grey and cucumber. <laughs> They'll be at the show too. So let me show you this, um, set because I was talking about the empire spa package and it's just the cutest hat that comes in it like a hat kit and i want to show you that 
So like, it's a wonderful little gift idea for any, you know, like for yourself or for someone you love and just like one and done already. So you like, I love gifts like that are already pre-thought with that person in mind. So if you have a knitter in your life that, you know, has, you know, had a tough year and who hasn't, um, and wants to give, you know, that, that person like a little extra comfort, you've got this hat kit and I'm going to show you this new pattern, the candle, the lighter, the bath bomb, the soap, the eye mask. Okay. And let me show you the new pattern. You're going to love this. This, this is called the starlight hat. Okay. This is another Audrey moment, but this is from another movie. Did you guys ever see the dress that she wears in Two for the Road? She goes to a party and she's wearing this dress and it's all in silver sequin paillettes. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I wanted to have a glittery paillette moment. And so what this is, this takes one skein of a new yarn base, which I have called the, the Lauren Teddy. And it's so scrumptious. It's so nubby, just like a teddy bear. And what you do, it's just a simple, you know, knit pearl rib all around. You decrease on the top, no biggie. Okay, no biggie. But then I give you a little packet of paillettes and then you just like sew on, add on the paillettes as you will. And let me just show you this little number. It is so cute. Let me take off this because I am now getting too hot. Okay, look at this. Isn't this just so cute? Like, even wearing nothing but like a black, black outfit um and then you pop this hat on with like a little toe or a little cute you could have nothing but like one color basic and then just add something fabulous like this it's just so much fun so i'll have different um hat kits with this base available again it comes with the pattern which has not been released yet so it's just exclusive with the kit and um, all these different paillettes for you guys to sew on and get your party on. Oh, it's just so cute, right? Woo! Fun. Fun and adorable. That's what we like. All right. I'm going to bring in the yarn now. Um, clear out some of the make space and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back and I just wanted to show you just a little sampling, a sampling of the yarns, the speckled yarns that I have created for the collection. So Bobaleros has been mostly doing um, solid tonals for since the beginning, I would say. We started off with a few speckled and then, you know, segued into just one color, but I wanted to get a few colors that were speckled based on, you know, inspiration from the collection and the Breakfast at Tiffany's motif um, down for the, you know, another option. So many different bases to choose from. However, this is all like limited quantity. So this is all that I've dyed up and that's pretty much all I'm going to dye for these. Um, so let me show you a couple of the options here. This one is called Central Park Stroll. And it really is so yummy. <laughs> I love the orange and the teal in here. This is on boucle. I do have sweaters quantities of the boucle because one sweater that I've been working on wanted to show you, it's still not done. I'm so embarrassed because it should be done by now, but I've just been kind of busy with the collection um, and I'm almost there, but this is a great sweater. If you want to knit just like a simple, light, 
easy breezy sweater. This is actually, I, I've talked about it before. This is the um, pattern, the fancy sweater by Lamb and Kid. And it's using um, my yarn. This is the boucle, the heady DK boucle. And also held um, with um, one strand of alpaca. This particular color is called Glitter Beach. Again, it's from the Barbie collection, which was summer 2023. Um, and this is just the Vivian Mohair in the color Sunshine, again, from the Barbie collection, summer 23. But I do have this available in um, some other combos, like for instance, this one. How cool would that be? Um, I've been wanting to make this. Um, this one, Central Park Straw, and you can do um, the mohair part. Like I decided to make this one with like a thick panel of striping here in the middle. I think it's just interesting, but if you want to do, I also did one version where I just did like thin stripes. I think I have that on my Ravelry page. If not, I'll put it up. And um, in any case, you could just do stripes with um, like this. This would be great, right? So this, like these are very summery colors. So maybe that's why I don't have the like drive to finish this right now because I'm like, this feels very spring, um, but I love the sweater and I want to wear it. So I will finish it. It's just a question of when, <laughs> when, when. All right. Um, so that's also um, this on the um, DK, Audrey DK base. And the Audrey DK base is superwash merino nylon and 245 yards. So really good. All right, another color. Oh, this one I've been putting on a lot because um, it's so interesting. It, this one is cocktail hour. Again, if you're on the Instagram, I really put in footage from the movie and Audrey again is having a cocktail party in the apartment and like everybody is you know dressed in like the gray and white suits and she comes out in the little black dress and there's like pops of mauve and like deep magenta this is a very sophisticated color in fact i do have this also enough to make the fancy sweater um i could imagine the mohair section being a gray which i do think i have a gray here um let me show you hold on yeah it's all here it's all here it's just a question of access what is the access yeah like that would be so cool you could even do it with a um maybe a light pink um or white white mohair might be interesting in the middle yeah i like that idea white mohair um Anyway, many, many different possibilities. So that is cocktail hour. I also have this in sock. So you can do like a shawlette, you can do a shawl, you can do socks, a lot of options. This is a color called Moon River. I'm gonna be talking about this color this week. Um, Moon River, you know, there's something so poignant about that song everyone loves it and it's a song they were going to take out of the movie and like when they were negotiating the movie and said you know hey that's not a good song of course it's like one of the most famous Henry Mancini songs now but back in the day um they were gonna cut it and Audrey said over my dead body and there you go she knew what she was talking about um the grays the pinks there's some blue moments. There's teal moments. This is like very, very opulent, very moody, very jewel toned. This is it in the boucle. Um, yeah, very dramatic. This is another color. I don't have much of this one, but um, inspired by the menswear in the movie. Bar Jack Paul is a brown color that I've dyed. Um, that's the main um, the love interest she has in the movie. I, I just like this because it's 
so again with the pops of the darker blue it's got that I don't know that cool vibe to it so a little bit more on the you know menswear side I'm very interesting color um this is the stroll in the park in the teddy um and you know like for potentially like this hat if you wanted to make it I've gotten enough paillettes to make different kits that are color coordinated so I'm going to throw those in if you'd rather though you can make that hat without the paillettes and just put a palm in I've got like tons of palm options as well so like obviously this one right away I'm thinking why not an orange right and I think I have an orange palm I just saw one here as they all fall out of the basket. Yeah, there we go. Right? How cool is that? These are quick gifts and warm and cozy. So that is also available. Now, one colorway that I'm going to have exclusively for the show, and I'm not going to make available on pre-sale, but if there's any left after Cake Palooza this weekend, I will make it available on the website but this is the cake palooza exclusive colorway to celebrate i am so excited to go for the first time as a vendor i've been there since um it's opening two years ago in 2021 i had the best time the best experience Alyssa from cake wool who hosts the event is the most lovely most gracious and talented hand dyer and she makes everything like so happy and welcoming and it's the most wonderful vibe i had the best time at cake palooza and so i wanted to celebrate um all the feelings of joy and the feelings of the harvest and autumn time in this colorway so this one is called rhapsody in gold it really is i don't know it, it's just opulent opulent you've got like the deep jade greens you've got the deep oranges it's now such an amazing time with the foliage here in the northeast and this really reflects a lot of that a lot of interesting color moments but yeah like even in the hat um either with paillettes or even like look at this one is just here um teal a black you know that's very elegant I like that um yes so that's a sampling of the speckles I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired this is a cute um, bubble cow and there goes my earring that's okay that's okay one earring down i'm too i'm too rough i'm too rough when i put things on okay um bubble cowl and hat so this is again a very fast quick and again we talked about the matchy matchy factor here it's so great to keep your neck warm because let's face it it gets cold and the neck when it's cold oh my gosh I, that's when mayhem ensues and the head you got to keep your head warm i always say that to my daughter and she's like not getting it. i think she's finally maya is coming around she's coming to the event cake palooza and um she's finally coming around to knitting hats and wearing hats for herself like realizing how important they are and not to mention great fashion statements so this one is made with the cream and black with a nice palm so i have kits that come with the hat and you know like all the yarn to make the hat with a palm this is an example of one in the bar jack paw with a chestnut palm to go with there'll be a lot of different options or you could create your own kit so that is that so another and final and last thing is like a word on like an assessment of a little parade of cowls um and shrugs so this is the sunday shrug 
need with the, you know, I know that Jackie came out this weekend with um, some options for making more fitted um, shaping things for the um, Sunday shrugs and also to have different like striping options. I had been doing that for a while, like um, with experimenting with different stripes and stuff. So I'll show you some of the ones from my collection. Um, this is all using the Boboleros yarn in the Rita, Chunky, and Vivian held together. I don't have these exact colors. They're not coming um, with me to Cake Palooza, but I have similar things. So this is um, just to show you the way that my yarn works up in the Sunday Shrugs. And there is, it's got a cinching like I know she calls um her new shrug the cinch but I just mean that in the sense like it really hugs you pulls you in um there's no floppiness um in this fabric which I like for the Sunday shrug like I want it to have a structure and so that's why I intentionally just pair them in um the Rita Chunky with the Vivian Mohair for that extra halo if you'd rather do it in alpaca that's possible too if um you know mohair is not to your liking this is um this is one kit that i just put together there's just one of them like this and it's so good this is the peach martini that would be the um main color and then you've got like so if you were to do this classic version your red would form the t like where the yellow is so that would be your color b and then you would have enough yarn to make the three main colors with the peach martini or you can use that and you can make a um, barbie bubble wrap in the two color version using the red as you know where the pink is substituting the red for where the pink is here that would be striking really striking so this is a ready-made kit again if you like this there's just one like this and i really nailed it with that color so if you love this dm me or email me at info at the grand manor and i will like hold this back for you because there's just one another one that is um just uh yeah just a like i made this one and i only have one as well this one again you can make this version of this um or you can make that two color um barbie wrap this one uses this green which is called sing sing i will not have much in that colorway but i might be dying more after the show um and the tiffany blue and um, it's just for gosh it's just so nice i just love the harmony of that it's got such a great peaceful cool vibe about it so this is available just one again so if you like it just get in contact with me so i will hold that back for you um let me show you a couple of other shrug ideas in the classic you know which you can make with any two colors of your choice i do have a similar yeah anyway i could do this one in pink and red that's similar to this this one's called perfect love and yeah I mean this is I want to say I didn't do any shaping here in the Sunday shrug but it somehow again because of the nature of this fabric with the Rita and the Vivian it does actually cinch in so it doesn't have that problem of flopping and I understand that the new uh, shrug version is for like fabrics or yarns that have a little bit more drapey quality to it, like Big Birdie. And so the cinching helps keep the shape. This again is so dependent on the fabric. And so because the fabric is, um, a, I, I want to say it's a firmer kind of fabric, it doesn't really need shaping. But again, you can do it like in the orange that I showed you in the beginning, like in this one, I did do shaping. And this is the exact same 
fiber content, the Rita Bulky and the Vivian Mohair, which is like what I use for all of the wraps and stuff like that. And just again, this is with shaping. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not bunching at all here, but if you're worried that it's going to flop, don't worry. Cause you can make that just as a tube cast on the amount of stitches. Um, I think it's 72 or something like that. And then just keep going and it's not going to droop on you. So just wanted to assure you of that. And, um, what else, what else? Oh, if you, this is one of my favorite Sunday shrugs that I've made and it was a four color version called gelateria. I will have not this kit, but I will have, you know, options. If you want to make something like this, I do have some of this lime left over from that collection. And for the brown, this is a camel, but you could definitely substitute that with um, this Bar Jack Paul from this collection. This here in the middle is alabaster, which you could substitute with trench coat. And if you want a pink, I will be bringing a very similar pink, um, like something like that. Okay. Um, so you can put that in or you can do that with this, but I like the pink more personally. I think the pink is nicer with the, against this kind of lime green. So that is available. This is a Sunday shrug again, straight up. No, no modifications, no decreases, just, you know, as written. And again, you see that there's not much flopping going on here. And that's it. Um, I think I've showed you guys everything. So just to recap, um, this whole collection will be available for a pre-sale event happening on Instagram live this Wednesday at noontime on the Bobolero's page. If there is anything that you've seen that interests you again, due to the limited nature of the quantities that I have, um, whatever sells out is just going to sell out and it's not going to be available. So if there is something that you really like, including any of those accessories, that I um, brought in just for this collection. Like, you know, the cups, the candles, the lipstick lighters, the purses, um, the earrings, um, just get in touch with me, DM me on Instagram or email me at info at the grand .com And I will be sure to hold those back for you. And if you are planning on coming to Rhinebeck, I would love to see you. I will be there at the Bobolero's booth at Cake Palooza on Friday, October 20th. I do think, do believe the hours are from 10 to 5.30. I will be there with my daughter, Maya, my husband, Mark, and we would love to meet you. We would love to say hello and give you just a big hug and, um, oh, stitch markers. I'm gonna have special stitch markers. They're not here yet. They're being custom made and they're almost finished. And so they should be here by next week. So I'm going to package them up. You're going to love these stitch markers because we picked out special ones for, again, keeping with the collection. So we're going to have something like, I think a lipstick is going to be this part of the stitch marker, high heel, black sunglasses, a little crown, because let's face it, Audrey wears the little crown. And so we're going to have like a little crown situation. Everything falls today everything is falling everything is falling down falling down falling down okay we have our little crown a little crown that does not look good on me but in any case um we will have a little crown on the stitch marker and a little cigarette because audrey is smoking in the movie and we're just like vibing with the um themes of the movie that's all so we're gonna have some fun with it we're going to have a great time at Cake Palooza. I can't wait to see you. I thank you all for, you know, just sharing your time with me and going down this La La Land rabbit hole because we got to play. We got to um, sometimes escape because it's too hard <laughs> without some escapism, right? So much love to you all and can't wait to see you. And please join in 
on Instagram Live Wednesday at 12 o'clock on Bo Boleros and just to say hello and um, yeah, we'll have a good time. All right, take good care. Bye.